Hey, what's going on, guys?、Uh, today we're gonna talk about in terms of the concept of heteroscedasticity, right?、Uh, so let's take a look on here.、Uh, so topic we're gonna be talking about is heteroscedasticity. Now let's understand what it really is, right? Uh, so we're gonna go back in terms of assumptions of regression, right? So if you guys haven't seen the video、uh, when I talked about different assumptions of regression,、uh, I would definitely recommend you take a look at you know what it is. But here is what I'm gonna recap.、Uh, the number one assumption that we made、uh, for assumptions for regression is、uh, the relationship uh, between uh, the dependent. And independent variable should be linear, right?、Uh, that's what we talked about the relationship between dependent and independent. So that's why when you talk about a regression, let's say y equal to b naught plus b one x and the error term,、uh, the relationship should be linear, right? Uh, that's what it really means. I mean, when you talk about x and y axis,、uh, the relationship should be linear. Right,、uh, should not really be a logarithmic scale or exponential. Right, this is exponential.、Uh, linear is going to be something like this.、Uh, the number two that we talked about is、uh, the errors. Right, the errors should not have a pattern. Right,、uh, so the error should not have a pattern. So what it really means.、Uh, Number first, it talks about hey, you know what?、Uh, if we have something like this, let's say we have two charts on here, right? So the error should not have a pattern, which means that the variance of error terms should be constant. Now, what do we mean by that? Uh, so let's say you know what we have two charts on here.、Uh, so let's say you know what、uh, we came up. You know what this is our best fit, which is this is the predicted value, right? This is our prediction, or the regression line predicted, right?、Uh, now let's say you know what. Of course, when you have a regression line like this,、uh, there's going to be errors, right? So what the heteroscedasticity, the letter E over here, is talking about is the errors, right? Now let's say you know what. Uh, this is what we predict. This is the line of prediction. Uh, let's say the realistic that the observation that we actually observe in the marketplace, right? Uh, let's say there could be consistent errors, right? So it means I mean, if something is consistent, then actually, uh, you can actually go and this is how it's gonna gonna look like, right? So this is called homo scedasticity, right? Uh, verse. Heteroscedasticity, which is going to be this one, is you know what?、Uh, errors are all over the place. So maybe the observations are over here,、uh, observations are over here,、uh, over here, over here, over here. So it's all over the place, right? So、uh, if you have error terms that you cannot really predict,、uh, that's what is called heteroscedasticity. Now, why is this concept of heteroscedasticity really、uh, important, right? What we're going to take a look at in the other Let's go to the next page on here. Create, discard, current sketch. Right. So here is where we talked about the heteroscedasticity, where the error terms are the variance of the error terms are not constant. Right. So now it's going to look more like this. So this is heteroscedasticity. Right. Ah.、Uh, so which means the variance of the error terms is not is not constant. Right, so when we talk about hey, you know what?、Uh, once again, if we have a term b naught b one x plus the error term, and we try to do some t stat, right? So t stat really is trying to find out are these、uh, coefficient, are these significant, right? So we always do a null hypothesis testing. Right now, how we do the null hypothesis testing is taking a look at t stat, which is、uh, whatever the coefficient is minus zero over the standard error, right? Uh, so we have the zero on here and the standard error. Now we talk about heteroscedasticity. We are looking at the errors, 
right? Which is the variance of errors. Now the error terms that we have over here uh, is not constant, right? So if this is not constant, uh, which means the error terms are pretty high. If the error terms are high, which means the T stat that we have uh, is gonna be low. Now let's say, for example, let's say the SB1 is say 10, and let's say there's an SB1 which is say uh, 100, right? So let's say there's condition one, there's condition two. So we try to go on and say, uh, and let's say, you know what, in both situations, B1 is equal to one. Now we try to do a T stat testing, right? So we do one over 10, and this one T stat is one over 100. So T stat over here is 0 0.1, over here is 0 0.01, right? So we have a, uh, if we have a higher standard error, right, which is there is more variance, a more variance means there's heteroscedacity, hence we have a lower T stat, right? Now what does a lower T stat means? When you talk about hypothesis testing, uh, we do this, right? Uh, where we have uh, the two extremes and then we have the null over here. So anything which lies in here is, uh, is gonna be considered as uh, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Anything over here, you actually reject the null hypothesis. So if we have a low T stat, a low T stat is gonna signify that you are in this range, right? If you're in this range, what it means is the coefficient or the B1 that you have is gonna be very, very insignificant, right? If you fail to reject null, what it means is the one, if you fail to reject null, which means your B1 is insignificant or it's actually equal to zero. Right, so that's what it really means. If you have a high standard error, if you have a high standard error, it means you have a very low T stat. Uh, if you have a low T stat, so let's say you know have the extremes on here. Let's say you have the extreme over here is uh, 1.96, over here is negative 1.96, and so on, right? Uh, so if you have a really low T stat, you are within these boundaries, and if you're within these boundaries, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Then what is the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is that B1 equal to zero, uh, so when you talk about, hey, you know what? Uh, what is the null hypothesis? That's, that's what it is. Uh, the null hypothesis is what? B1 equal to zero. And the alternative is that B1 is not equal to zero, right? So if it's failed to reject null, which means our B1 is gonna be equal to zero, which means the B1 is gonna be insignificant. If B1 is insignificant, think about it. The regression line you have over here uh, is gonna be no good. Right? I mean, if it's B1 is as close to zero, it cannot really help you predict anything. Right? Uh, so that's what I mean in terms of uh, the heteroscedasticity is going to be a very, very uh, important uh, condition to see, take a look at the regression. So when you have different regressions, uh, you definitely want to take a look at in this context because any regression line that you have is going to have error terms Right, and if it if it does have, let's say, the error terms, uh, the, you have to take a look at uh, what is the variance of the error terms, right? Is the variance terms, uh, is it consistent or is it not consistent? If it's not consistent and is all over the place, which means the variance is pretty high. If variance is pretty high, means the standard deviation is very high. If the standard de deviation is very high, which means you will have a very very low T stat. Having a low T stat means the significance of that particular, uh, the significance of the coefficient is not is, is is insignificant, right? The coefficient that you have over here, this is really the end result. So that's why uh, we always want to take a look at the regression that we have. Uh, does it actually? Uh, is there really a variance? If there is no variance, then it's great. If there is variance, then you are running a situation, running into a situation where. Uh, the B1 that you have, it actually might be insignificant, right? So that's it for the that's it for the day, guys. Uh, hope you guys like the video. Do like and subscribe. Gonna make more videos about CFA level two. Thank you.